Hi, this e-clarification today is about the Levinthal's paradox. Cyrus Levinthal, who got a PhD in physics from the University of California, Berkeley, Cal, and he was also known as the father of the computer graphic displays of protein structure, gave this paper uh, in 1969 at a conference in Illinois. 1969 was 12 years after Christian and Vincent showed that the protein folded very rapidly and without the need of information from outside. He came to the conclusion that the protein fold is the information needed is contained in the amino acid sequence of the protein. So Levinthal knew about Christian and Vincent's experiments and how the protein is folded so rapidly and reliably. And he also uh, knew that people at that time were arguing that the proteins fold in a random process. The experiment is very confirmation in a random way. So his first statement at the meeting was that uh, despite the astronomical numbers of possibilities, protein fold rapidly and quickly to the native state. Rapidly because it's less than one second and reliably because Anfinsen demonstrated that, right? That you can pick up a protein that has a function, you can denature that protein, and we can refold that protein back and have the protein 100% functional. So here's the rationale for uh, Levinthal. If each amino acid residue can adopt three conformations, a protein with 100 residues would have a 3 to the power of 100 conformations, which give us 5.15 10 to the power of 47 conformation. And this is a protein of 100 amino acids only. So he considered that, let's take, for example, the time of 0.1 picosecond, which is a very short period of time, uh, for each conformation to be experimented. So if it did to be the case, then the number, the time that will be needed to test all the different possibilities as we saw above, would be 10 to the power of a negative 13, which was 0.1 picosecond, times 5.15 10 to the power of 47. This would give 5.15 10 to the power of 35 seconds. Very long period of time. If you transform that in in years, it becomes 1.6 10 to the power of 27 years. To give you an idea how long this time is, and we know that's not that long, it's only in seconds, the universe is 13.8 10 to the power of 9. We're talking about the 10 to the power of 27. So obviously, protein does not fold randomly, and that was the paradox. Cannot get both ways, cannot fold rapidly and be random. It's not a random process. So he stated the meat based on his experiments uh, from the lab, if, uh, from the computer calculations and simulations. Uh, he said, we feel that protein folding is speeded and guided by the rapid formation of local interaction, which then determines the further folding of the peptide. Uh, so that's going back to what we already discussed in class, uh, these various uh, models that we have now, that one of the models that the secondary structures are formed first, and then the tertiary structure of the protein. The other model that says that the, uh, the folding occurs that for hydrophobic interaction, the burial of the hydrophobic residues. Uh, and there's another third model that they consider that the both uh, events happen at the same time. One way or the other, this is exactly what he was saying here without knowing any of what's known right now. So that's what uh, Levinthal said, but people went to the stream and then said, okay, there is a fixed pathway uh, for this protein to fold, and it became like a fixed idea, but now we know that's not a fixed pathway. There are multiple pathways that the protein can fold, but they all converge, and that's a separate story, right? So larger proteins may also have a more complex pathway, uh, which each domain folding separately before the entire molecule progress 
to its native conformation. We also know that fold may involve the formation of intermediates that we call the molten globule, followed by arrangement in the native conformation. So there are these various different steps that we know now, but we know uh, that's not a random process, and we know also that's not a single pathway. There are multiple pathways, and they converge to a native conformation. So let's have a look now at the energy landscape, the folding funnel, which is a mapping of all possible conformation of a protein and the corresponding free energy of Gibbs. So this beautiful illustration of the energy landscape was actually based on a publication in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Here's the figure that generated that illustration there. So based on computer simulation, uh, they predict different pathways for the protein to fold. And here in this small, uh, in the nice uh, diagram, we see uh, that there is evidence for the existence of parallel pathway system. Protein can come to become the same uh, native conformation, not only by one single pathway, but the different pathways. And it also shows that the, the fold kinetics is very complex. Some situation, the protein may be trapped in some form that's not going to lead to the native conformation. That's what the dashed arrow is representing here. This is a very nice illustration of the landscape, energy landscape made by Stony Brook University. You see here, as they get the confirmation until they find uh, the bottom of the landscape where they have the native confirmation formed. Let's have another look here at this beautiful animation. Uh, as the confirmation starts forming, the energy is decreasing, and then finally, arrive at the bottom of the native conformation in the proper folding of the protein. We present in class this energy landscape, and the, let's recap what we have been discussed. The folding process may take different pathways. Uh, many local energy minima are separated by high energy barriers. That's what we see in the landscape. And chaperone is assisting folding and the preventing aggregation, and the non-specific interaction between unfolded proteins may lead to aggregation, and aggregation may be energetically more stable. And therefore, once they reach this state, there is no way to get it back to the protein. So if the protein is somewhat trapped in some intermediate structure, uh, chaperones may be able to help and they move the proteins out of those states to the folded conformation. Uh, so they can prevent the uh, proteins to go from an intermediate to, the, to get to an amorphous aggregate.